Thank you.
JMU Athletics and the JMU Alumni Association are teaming up to bring you this free Matazone HD Sportsnet feature presentation. From Harrisonburg, Virginia, the campus of James Madison University, welcome to NCAA Men's Soccer live from University Park. An in-state non-conference rivalry as the 2-1 JMU Dukes entertain the BMI Kedets 0-2-1 on the season out of Lexington, Virginia. Tonight's matchup is being presented to you by the JMU Alumni Association. Comcast Sportsnet, the JMU Graduate School, Intellos Wireless, the JMU Bookstore, Residence Inn, and Fox Hill Townhomes. A very pleasant good evening, everyone. A muggy one it is at that here in Harrisonburg. I'm Kurt Dudley, joined up uh, top of our broadcast location by Houston Stutz, and we'll be joining uh, down field side by Tanisha Watkins also during tonight's broadcast here on Madison HD Sportsnet presented to you by the JMU Alumni Association. Two Division I soccer programs, only about 60 miles apart, but nine years separates the last time a match was played in this series. 
which began way back in 1968 when JMU was in the early stages of its men's varsity sports programs. And the Kedats, well, they were playing soccer at that time at the club level. The first four matches were played at unrecorded sites. We don't know if they were here, they were there, or somewhere in between. We're really not sure. But they did split the first two between the uh, first four, I should say, between the two squads. Uh, maybe one reason that the series faded after a match each year from 68 to 86 is that the Dukes, they dominated the series. In fact, the all-time history, regardless of status, varsity or not, is 20 and 2 favoring the Dukes. The Dukes have outscored the Kedats 78 to 7 of the last 20 encounters. But Houston, you know, at BMI they study history, at James Madison they study history. All that is history because this is a new day and a, a new start to this series. So you can really just throw everything I told you right out the window as far as it's concerned tonight. Yeah, you really have to throw it out the window. It's a soccer match. You play the game for a reason. Anything can happen on any given night. But if we want to look at a few stats to get you prepared for tonight's game, for the present, I should say, at least, for this season, the BMI Cadets, and as you mentioned, 0-2-1. They start off the season with a 3 0 loss to Army, then lost at Campbell 3-2, but they did get one draw against NJIT on September 6th, 1-1. The Jamie Dukes, however, they're on a losing streak. They lost 1-0 to the UNCG Spartans, a very good UNC, UNCG team based out of Greensboro. Again, they lost 1-0. The goal was scored by Ali Mahadi for UNC in the 75th minute when it was unassisted. 25 yards out, they said the goalie was screened, Kyle Morton, and that's what allowed the ball to get to the back of the net. JMU was outshot in that game, 14-11. to Corner kicks were even 6-6, and saves were even as well, 4-4. UNCG did do a lot more fouling, and I guess that's why they're called the Spartans, 12-4. And fouls UNCG with the advantage. One other thing to look at, though, that's coming from that game, three Jamie Dukes got yellow cards, Callum Hill, Josh Grant, and Mitchell Jordan. So we'll see how that affects their play tonight because I'm not exactly sure what the college rule is, but I believe if they get a yellow card tonight, that could prevent them from playing in their next match. Well, we'll see. And, of course, uh, just the matchup tonight between the Dukes and the Kedats. We'll come back and we'll hear from the Dukes head coach, Dr. Tom Martin. That's coming up right after this timeout as you're watching JMU Men's Soccer in HD Live on Matazone HD Sportsnet presented by the JMU Alumni Association. Instead of asking yourself, where did those four years go? Think about where the next 40 will take you. Involved at Madison. Dukes from day one, alumni for life. Visit the James Madison University Bookstore, your source for all things JMU. Get your official Duke gear. Open after every football game. The JMU Bookstore. Support the team. Jim and John are both covered by the nation's best networks. Jim uses Entelos Wireless. John does not. Jim saves money every month. John does not. And thanks to those savings, Jim has money left over for hula hoops, a little mood music, and access to the rooftop pool. John does not. And Tellos Wireless. The difference is savings. Switch now and get unlimited data, text, and talk for just $79.99. Well, Dr. Tom Martin's in his 28th year as the head coach of the JMU Dukes, the winningest active coach in college men's soccer play. 345 wins. And just before tonight's matchup, our own Tanisha Watkins had a chance to catch up with the Dukes head coach. Tanisha? Thanks, Kurt. Now, Coach Martin, what are some of the things that you focus on to prepare for tonight's game against VMI? Well, it's this early in the season, it's more focusing on our preparation, what we do. You know, you don't have detailed scanning reports from people this early in the year, not much video stuff, and uh, we're kind of a work in progress ourselves, you know. It's a transition year for us, and we've done some very good things, but we've done some things that weren't so good. So it was all mostly geared about our preparation, what we need to do to make ourselves better. And what strengths do you see emerging from the Dukes this season? 
Well, I think uh, when we're healthy, we're probably going to have as much quality depth as we've had. You know, it, it's nice in training sessions right now where everybody belongs. You can do certain things and include everybody. And that, even though we may have had more talent in past years, that hasn't been the case. You know, there's a drop off after you get past 12 or 13 or 13 and 14, and you can't compensate for a couple injuries. I think by the time it's all done this year, uh, you'll see a deeper team. And now, coming off of a loss, how do you think that the team is going to use that to motivate them in order to win tonight's game? Well, it's always questionable with the younger team, you know, and, and a team that's developing their own leadership style. I think they'll respond very well. But again, it's a coin flip. You never know. We need a fast start. We need to put some emotion into the game and, and hopefully get some success in the first 20, 25 minutes. All right. Well, good luck tonight, Coach. Back to you, Kurt. Thank you very much, Tanisha, and uh, introducing the starting lineup. And now, of course, we do have the national anthem, a very special day, of course, and the history of the United States, uh, special in a, a dubious way, of course, with the uh, anniversary of 9-11-2001. And we will have our national anthem followed by a moment of silence here as we will never forget 9-11-2001. And now our national anthem here at University Park. And we're set for college soccer tonight, non-conference play. Two schools uh, just about 60 miles apart. The Dukes of James Madison playing host to the VMI Cadets. Once again, I'm Kurt Dudley along with Houston Studs. Let's take a look at our starters tonight. First for Richie Rose in his uh, fourth season overall, second year as the head coach of the VMI Cadets, a, a 2004 graduate of Lander College as uh, he is an Englishman, uh, native of England. And he will put in goal tonight, Daniel Kitchen and a senior from Richmond, Virginia. The other starters for the Kedats will be uh, Hunter Morgan, a sophomore also out of Richmond. Eric Fries, a sophomore from Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania. Blake McCauley, a junior from uh, Fuquay, Verina, North Carolina. Stephen Mallon, a senior from Hampton, Virginia. Taylor uh, Rafferty, that is, Rafahi, that is, excuse me, from Palmyra, Virginia. Aaron White, a senior from Wilson, North Carolina. Kyle Forche, a sophomore out of Chesterfield, Virginia. Max Farnholt, a junior from Richmond. And Wes Saupe from Middle Othing, Virginia, a freshman. Again, Richie Rose in his second year. For the Dukes, Tom Martin, 345 wins, 143 losses, and 53 ties in his tenure at JMU. In goal will be sophomore Kyle Morton out of Westchester, Pennsylvania. Daniel Wappert, a sophomore from Munich, Germany. Callum Hill, a freshman from Liverpool, England. Tim Whitebread, a redshirt junior from McLean. Mitchell Jordan, a freshman from Hanover, Germany. Jonathan Barton, a junior from Harrow, England. And Josh Grant, a junior from Plymouth, England. Also starting for the Dukes, Adam Bastidas, a redshirt senior from Catasqua, Pennsylvania. And Tom Fui, a sophomore from Buckinghamshire, England. And Bjarki Adelsteinsen out of Iceland, starting in the back for the Dukes of JMU, wearing number 29 this year, or number three a year ago. And we'll find out at halftime how to really pronounce his name. And uh, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. 
But uh, play certainly has started. The Dukes, as you can see, are wearing their all-whites tonight, and uh, BMI clad in the red here this evening. BMI coming off that 1-1 uh, tie with New Jersey Institute of Technology. That game was a very physical game. More than 30 penalties were called in it. Six cards were dished out, and I think there was a skirmish at the end of that game as well. So we'll see if that uh, translates over into uh, a physical game here today. Uh, don't think it'll be quite the same, but we'll, uh, we'll see how that does mature. Again, Jamie, only four fouls in that game against UNCG. They got out fouled 12 to 4, so we'll see if they try and pick up their aggressiveness a little bit and find that happy medium that you really need to be uh, a powerful squad in soccer. Another starter I missed there, sorry, Santo Ripa wears number 21 out of Virginia Beach. He is a senior on the left back right now, and it comes on in to the Dukes, and with it is Jordan Mit uh, Mitchell Jordan, that is. Jordan has it. The freshman leaves it to the right corner. Adam Bastidos down there. He's going to try to get to it. Slides it in off the end line. It's going to be out of bounds. It'll be our first, or a throw in, I should say, for VMI. And Ripa will send it in. Tough spot here for VMI. Deep in their own territory. No room to really drop back. So you're going to have to throw it into the JMU offense. With it is Mike Whitaker, a senior. Now lost up to Rippert. Rippert goes to the air. And back to settle it down for the Dukes is Daniel Roppert. Roppert again, a sophomore out of Munich, Germany. Does have one goal on the young season. Jamie scored five goals this year, and they're out scoring opponents five to two. And that a missed touch by the Dukes, Jordan. It seems like, uh, you know, the women's soccer team here has already played, what, six matches thus far, whereas this is just match number four for the men's soccer team. So they're just getting started, basically, where the women have started to really pick up an identity. They're currently 3-3. Three and three. Tim Whitebread will send it back to Kyle Morton. Morton in goal, two, uh, two goals against, uh, or excuse me, uh, eight saves against him thus far this season. As the Dukes, they opened up by winning. Two matches here in the Fairfield in by Marriott Invitational and then lost here at home last Saturday night to UNC Greensboro. Rippa with the header, gets it under control. Jordan with it now, working on the right side. A lot of action here on this side of the turf at this point. Here's Tom Fui. Fui very recognizable with those orange cleats that he wears. It's tough to miss him. It is. <laughs> He's easy to mark for that reason anyway. Robert will send it into the middle, try to something a little different this time. Whitebread sends it forward, knocked down out of the air by Hunter Morgan. Now controlled on the right side. Dukes will collapse in over there, bring it back to the near side again. V VMI early, just having trouble with their, their simple touches. Looks like they're getting a little too much on their first touch each time they control the ball. And it's easy for the Jamie defense to, to really jump on top of them then. I think it might have something to do with the adjustment. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of surface that they've played on thus far this year, but this is a very fast surface. Uh, ball doesn't hang up very much. And that uh, may have something to do with it. It may take a little while for them to adjust to the speed of the game and the surface here at University Park. Taken away nicely there by Jordan. He'll send it ahead with it for the Dukes. Josh Grant. Grant back to Jordan on the right wing. He's got three coming into the top of the box. He's going to slow it down there, getting pressure, and booted out of bounds. Ripa, last to touch it, will be a throw in. And coming back to toss it in will be Mike Whitaker. Whitaker, a senior from Doylestown, Pennsylvania. Coming back to Robert. Robert is going to serve it up from there. Goes over the top, and the keeper comes up. Kitchen grabs it out of the air. Right before that last throw in, it was a really good run by Mitchell Jordan. And he, he was kind of upset with his teammates. He made the run and threw his hands up like, all right, guys, you need to get down here and help me out. Because like you mentioned, Kurt, it was four VMI defenders back. No Jamie forwards or midfielders. Adel Steinson with it. We'll keep it on the ground. Now sent forward Fui out of the air. Nice touch it goes. Grant with it. Grant will back it up a bit, getting pressured on the far side. Blake McCauley. McCauley was pushed in the back that started the uh, 
scrim or the uh, scrum, we should say, against NJIT. So I was told. Now it's Whitaker. Pop forward by Hill. Keeping it up in the air, Eric Freeze out of Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania. Home of the Elizabethtown Blue Jays, Elizabethtown College. Early on, it looks like VMI is doing a good job of really keeping their shape as of right now. They're looks like a disciplined team, which you expect coming from a military academy. Fui with a long blast. Yeah, if you're not disciplined uh, at VMI, you'll find yourself up doing push-ups at 2.30 in the morning. Yeah, it wouldn't be fun. Among other things, I have no idea, but uh, <laughs> so, the, uh, so the legend goes. Got to admire these young men that uh, go to VMI. And if they can, uh, if they can get through the, the rigors of that uh, institution, they uh, usually have things pretty set, set up very nicely for them afterwards. A lot of success comes out of that uh, institution. It's a really strong alumni-based school as well. A lot of support. Absolutely. Seems like you can't go anywhere without seeing a VMI sticker somewhere. Whitaker. Of course, a lot of history uh, right here in the valley with VMI. You go up to Newmarket. You know, this was an old battlefield site itself during the Civil War, and you, know, you had the cadets going up to the Newmarket for the battle up there. I believe when they're a senior, they have to take a, a long march up the side of 81 somewhere. Oh, do they? I'm not completely positive. I have a friend go there, and I believe it was something like that, so don't hold me to it. Well, they do a lot of marching. They do a lot of running. And they do a lot of, of course, uh, physical fitness work throughout their careers, so whether they're student athletes or not. Here the Dukes have it in the box, and Fui leaves it back. Here comes Hill. Hill was about to send a blast. Here's a shot just wide to the left. Good shot, did a good job of keeping that ball low. Came in off a nice little bounce, half volley, kept the knee over top of the ball and kept it on the ground. Good shot, just a little to the left of the net. Dukes with a couple of shots here in minute number eight. And most of the play uh, to the right of the Dukes side of the field and uh, in the BMI end as far as the overall action thus far. As it comes to this side again, nice head forward there by Jordan. Here's Bastidas. Bastidas slows it down. Little nifty footwork, puts it just beyond the reach. No, he's going to slide in and pick it up. Aaron White will send it back to Ripa. Ripa going over to Morgan. Dangerous position right there. Fui was in pursuit. Hill back to Fui. A couple of English chaps working together there. Slides it through and off sides will be the call as Josh Grant just a little too far uh, far forward there on the play. Yeah, it looked like he went back past the defense and then came forward right before the ball was passed his way to, to pick up the ball in offside position. Excuse me. It picked it up in onside position, but it was offside from running back on. Kitchen will leave it on the ground, and after one touch, here comes Jordan with it for JMU. Collision there. Jordan sees it go between his legs out of bounds as White was the last to touch it. It'll be a throw in. Whitaker to Jordan. Bastidas fakes one, goes the other way, comes to the midline. On the run with it now for the Dukes, Jonathan Barden. Barden slides it forward. This is Whitebread who had come into the picture. Puts it inside the box, but easily cleared out. Barden heads it forward looking for Grant and it ends up on one hop in the possession of the keeper Kitchen who quickly whirls it out. Up the line it goes. Here come the key dads and McCauley. McCauley gets bumped off the ball. We have a foul. Not a bad foul by Robert. VMI was really pulling the transition. Now the Jamie defense gets back and can set up. Nothing bad enough to warn a, a card or caution or anything like that. Morgan will start it. Just a good hard play. BMI positioning everybody just at the top of the 18. Now they start their run. Getting into the mix and it goes all the way through everybody. Not sure who was last to touch it. The officials I'll say it's the keeper ball. So it'll be uh, in the possession of Kyle Morton. As apparently I don't know if it was uh, hit by one of the key dance or just not touched by anyone at all. 
It was a really good shot off the set piece. Went right through the defense and somehow didn't manage to touch anyone. So Morton will start it all over again, the sophomore. Boots it at the six and gets good air underneath of it. Good deep start. McCollum keeps it alive. Jordan settles it there. Looking to go up the midline, but nothing doing. Cadets with it now. Sends it wide to the far side off the foot of Hunter Morgan. Battle out on the far side. One by Grant. Grant gets it to Jordan. And Jordan misfires trying to get it back to Fui. That puts the turnover in possession of VMI. VMI on a run. Dukes have numbers down there. Now serving into the box, but healed back by Robert. Cleared out. Whitaker. Here comes Bastidas way from the midfield. And it'll be knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Adam Bastidas, the two-time Scholar Athlete of the Year of all the athletes at James Madison University. And you're talking more than 400. Really good closing speed that you saw there by Bastidas. Really got in on the defender and not allowed him any advancement. A lot of open space in the midfield, and the Dukes will set it up here. Here's a run on the left side. It's Fui. Fui being harassed there by Freeze. Gets around him. Fui trying to set it up. Freeze there on the slide. And it'll be our first corner of the evening, and it'll go to the Dukes of James Madison. As we are in minute number 12, Dukes with a couple of shots, VMI zero. And time has been called. We're going to stop the clock here with 33.03 to go. And we may have a missing contact or player showing that uh, got a lens concern or something of that sort with an eye. Uh, it looks like he may have lost it uh, somewhere up. Let's see if he comes into this room. In his line. eye. sure if they've quite found it yet and that is identifying him is Stephen Mallon a senior from Hampton here's the start off the corner and the header and it's ricocheted up above as Kitchen takes the short hop somehow that ball just careened over top of him back onto the back of the net kitchen. that'll be another another corner Kitchen did a good job of keeping that ball out of the kitchen it I, I don't know how he, he got in there and got his hands in there but Somehow the spatulas worked on this occasion. <laughs> the spatulas did work. It just kind of rolled off his body as well and then was able to punch it over. There's a header and the goal. The score off the set piece on the corner. Adel Steinson with the header off the service by Adam Bastidas as they get Adel Steinson with all his height there in the box right in front. And with 32-31 to play in the 13th minute, the Dukes take the one to nothing lead. Big play there by... Adam Steins, and he was able to get in there, get the head on the ball, and then put it in the back of the net. And of course, for JMU, it's always good to get ahead early. I mean, not really put it in cruise control, but you, it's a little bit easier to, to hold that lead. Well, as Dr. Martin told Tanisha before the game, he, he wanted a fast start. Possession time has certainly uh, been in favor. Overall possession has been in favor of the Dukes, and there they capitalize 13 minutes in with Adel Steinson coming up with his first goal of the season and Adam Bastidas with his first assist. And Adam with three points now on the year. He's already got uh, the, a goal on the young year. So it's 1-0, JMU, four shots on goal, for, or four shots for the Dukes thus far. Bjorki, he's listed as a sophomore, which he is a sophomore, but he's a very old sophomore, Kurt, and he told us in an interview that the... Uh, the schooling system's a little bit different nice and he's actually 21 years old so an old sophomore not one bad the oldest dudes yeah, there you go it, yeah it's it's you know when coach matthews in football talks about red shirting players and what have you know you've got 21 and 22 year olds oftentimes if you're playing a true freshman who's 18 and from that sport of course it makes a huge difference and there's a hand save but on the ricochet right back in so that lead did not last very long as the cadets Get a rebound and a score put back in. Pick up who the player was. I believe it was Wes Sawpay coming up. It was indeed Wes Sawpay, a freshman from Middle Othian, Virginia. I think he went to Cosby High School. That'll be his first goal of his collegiate career. So that was a quick response as we're just in the 14th minute. 
And saute. Sauteing it in. So we got kitchen and saute, saute, and <laughs> we'll try to get away from all the other <laughs> culinary references for tonight. But that just shows you why you tell younger athletes when you shoot the ball, always follow it because you never know what the keeper is going to do. And that's why you always preach to keepers if you can catch it, catch it. You don't want to really bet it out and give the offense another chance at it. As you saw there, the goalie stuck on the ground, nothing he could do. We'll see what this does to the pep of the step of EMI as well as to the Dukes. I'm sure it uh, may have irritated Dr. Martin and the coaching staff there to give up a goal so quickly after taking the 1-0 lead. So we're tied at 1-1. And white bread on the run left side. Going to be knocked off the end line. Dukes will get another corner play from the opposite side. They always say that. Five minutes after a team scores a goal is when they're the most vulnerable. Five minutes after they score and the first five minutes of each half. So Dukes will have their five minutes to see if they can work with at this stage. Tom Fooey will start it out of England. Curves it back away. Adel Steinson's head was there. Robert takes the shot. It's going to be blocked. Ripa was there. And nice try to save. And he can't quite. Did he get to it? Looks like it may be a throw. It appears that it might be the case. As he was saying, yep, it looks like it. Well, I'm not sure. Yep, it is going to be a throw as it comes up to our side of the pin. Inbounds. And we have an offside right away. And once he throws that ball in, he's really got to get in and get back. That's one thing. BMI, as soon as he threw it in, they moved up. And you can be offsides on a throw in. So. So Duke squander a deep, deep possession. You're in the 16th minute. Forward it goes. Headed by McCullum. McCullum got away with a little push in the back there. Allowed him to get to that header. McCullum also relatively tall. For the most part, JMU's really controlled the possession in the middle of the field, and it looks like they have more of the skill in the field. But VMI really strong on their set pieces early, so if JMU wants to, to really get ahead, they cannot give up any set pieces within at least 30 to 40 yards of the net. I wouldn't say that the intensity is ratcheted up, but maybe just a little bit after the back-to-back -back goals for both teams, I think, just uh, from observation. Adel Steinson probably will release it all the way back. Comes to the midfield. Up the midline, it's Robert. He comes to the near side. Whitaker will have to run to hurry to get to it, and he does right at the midfield stripe. He'll find Grant. Grant's got Jordan with him there, but overshoots him. It'll be a throw in for the boys in red. Still 1-1. Bjarke Adel Steinson scoring for the Dukes in the 13th minute, but in the 14th minute, West Saupe records his first collegiate score and knots the score at one piece. Looks like that goal, like you mentioned, uh, got Coach Martin a little upset, and they have a bunch of Dukes ready to come in, warming up on the sideline. Also, he told uh, Tanisha, here's a nice service. Punched out. Ball comes free. Grant couldn't quite settle it as he was about ready to set up and blast into the open net. It's got to be a one-touch shot when you have – the defense right there crashing in inside the 18. You don't have time to settle it. You just got to come in and fire and keep it low. VMI, a fortunate bounce in their favor in that case. Grant certainly trying to settle it in a hurry. Here's Bastidas with the nifty footwork to get around Saupe. Now get some help. Sent through by Barden. Here's Fui. Lines it up. He'll take the shot. Keeps it low. It's deflected wide of the post. 27-11 go, first half. 1-1 one, one is our score. Looks like Fui didn't get a lot of it either. Don't know if his foot dragged the ground or not, but also the deflection really took some pace off the ball. Yeah, what uh, Dr. Martin was telling Tanisha Watkins in the pregame as well, a lot of depth on this team, so not a surprise that uh, you see four or five guys up for substitutions at the same time or very close to one another. That may be the way that this team operates the entire year. Just, 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 just. 
Stars will have to emerge. I think Grant thought he was offsides there for a second, as well as the rest of the Dukes, but no signal by the referee. Jonathan Barden tried to take a left-footed swing at it, didn't quite get enough of it. So it settles all the way back. Morton quickly sends it forward. That'll Steinson. Here's Barden again. Jonathan sends it in the air. He's got Grant on the far side. May have had a little too much. Turf will not hold it. And it'll trickle all the way out of bounds. First substitute comes in for the Dukes. It'll be Steven Mashinsky. He's a redshirt junior out of Fairfax with an assist thus far this season. Mashinsky's one of those guys that had the roll off the bench. He's uh, played since his freshman year coming in in spurts. Barden with the header. Lands at the feet of Fui. Not very long there, however, as VMI takes control. Mashinsky putting the fresh legs in pursuit. Now he'll give up on it, uh, realizing a lot of ground to cover for no necessary reason. Good substitution by Coach Martin to bring in some fresh legs to Ford. It looked like they were getting a little tired early, and maybe that had a little to do with the offsides. It's because the ball was coming downfield, and the defense was sending back up so quickly that the Fords weren't able to step back and get back on sides before the ball was coming their way once again. Over the top it goes, white bread. Fui gets knocked down. And on the far side, Kyle Forche with a touch, knocks it out of bounds. The quick throw in. Barden. And all sides once again, this time it was Mashinsky who had slid up just a little too far. Close play, but clearly offside. Well, maybe a body length. You're watching JMU men's soccer tonight on Matazone HD Sportsnet, presented to you by the JMU Alumni Association. Proud sponsor for the next three years, presenting sponsor of Matazone. And I'm sure we've got a few alumni that are uh, watching tonight on JMUSports.com and Matazone. Probably a gentleman by the name of Paul Wyatt. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, he's not geared in this evening watching with much anticipation and maybe a little frustration as well that's going to end up as a corner play as Robert sends it well off the back line and we'll see the set piece coming from VMI I'm really surprised Morton didn't call off Robert there and really come in and get that ball he came in with a good pace to it and nobody around looked like he got a, could have got to it got his hands on it before the ball was sent out of play on the baseline, which results in a corner kick, and we've seen early that VMI can really play well off these free kicks. Headed out by Adel Steinson as he uses his head to score a goal and uses that one to clear. And now a collision inside the box, and the Kedet player took the brunt of that. Kyle Morton pops right back up. And that was Ripa that ends up down on the ground. Both those guys, 190 pounds, so no advantage either way. Morton just got a little bit better uh, angle at it. Here's a throw in, chipped up into the air. Over the top it goes. Robert Whitaker keeps it in play. Nicely done. Here's Mashinsky. Nice pass right to his man, Grant. Grant back to Bastidas. The Dukes with a bit of a transition. VMI getting back, though, and here come the Dukes now. Grant leaves it up the line. Here's Mashinsky to come to meet it. He puts it in front of the 18, and a nice try by the Duke's Tom Fui. And then cleared out. Good pass from Mashinsky with the red hair to the man with the orange neon cleats. So a chuck in now for Mashinsky. Goes the short route to Bastidas. He opens it up, takes the shot, deflected back out, out of, off the end line. We'll have a corner play. So Dukes gets a try it again. Again, that's another one of those shots. You're just kind of hoping that the goalie can't find the ball. That somewhat dangerous defensive play there does result in Bastidas. This is where the Dukes scored the first goal tonight. Bastidas leaves it, this time a little deeper. Goes the back way. Roberts there, and another. Looks like it may have hooked out of bounds. Okay, gotcha. He is a right-footed guy, so. 
probably got that hook out of bounds and came back over. Which it is out of bounds if it goes out over in the air. Unlike basketball or any other sport where. It's like uh, I remember a time when Macy Brooks and Juan Dorsey were the outfielders for the Dukes, and they were also wide receivers in the mid 90s. And when Juan Dorsey would catch a fly ball down in foul territory, he would try to toe the line. <laughs> it's like, Juan, you can go catch it in foul ground. It counts in this sport. <laughs> I <laughs> guess, uh, but then if you, you you get used to it in right. football, I guess. It he did. I was, I don't know why, I was sitting in the dugout this game. It was down at Bud Matheny against Old Dominion, and I was sitting just outside the press box, I mean the uh, dugout, and looking right down the line, and that's what he did. He got, it would have been a good catch either way. <laughs> he would have picked up the first down. Then he goes back to football there, and I bet he's running across the line yeah, trying to make the yeah, catch. Yeah. He uh, now a very successful modeling career as there's Kitchen getting another save or pulling it out of the air again. Dukes have taken seven shots to two for VMI. Both Keepers with a save. Nice tackle by Mashinsky. Yeah, Juan got into the modeling business and has done a very nice job with that. Does uh, some Under Armour and all. Actually, I think he was he, he played a part in um, Breaking Bad one time too. He was a policeman in Breaking Bad. You can and do that's off the after, end line. You can do anything after being a Jamie Duke. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's right. He was out of Glen Elg, Maryland. And another corner coming up this time for Bastidas. Dukes will send Adelsteinson and Barden inside the six. Here's Hill on the move out front. Goes to the deep. And this was ricochet off and a shot. And it looked like a defensive save there is right off the end line was Rafahi. Still staying alive, and Kitchen will knock it down. Good defensive play by the Cadets. Really packing it in, being ready for just about anything in Kitchen as well. Good performance. Eight shots on goal, or excuse me, eight shots overall for the Jamie Dukes, only two for the Cadets. They entered the night out scoring opponents 40 to 36, or excuse me, out shooting opponents 40 to 36. It's only one save for Kyle Morton, two for Kitchen. In the 27th minute we go. Gone 13 minutes since our last score. And cleared out. Kitchen goes deep. Nice job of keeping it back in play. Racing over there was uh, Rafahi. Coming out with it now McCauley. McCauley keeps it. Hill is on his heels. Nice sliding tackle. Did get the ball. Comes out to Robert. He comes to the near side. Mashinsky. Steven to Bastidas. Adam has it. Sends it wide again. Fui on the far side. Really good tackle by Hill back there. Really coming from behind and making it clean. That's the tough part. Fui sets it up, but a back is there to clear it back out. There's a push in the back. The foul will go against McCauley. Barden didn't need much influence to uh, tumble down, but uh, did a nice job of getting the call. I was about to say, I think he added a little bit to that. Maybe uh, he can go talk to Breaking Bad. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, though. It's always part of the game. So the Dukes will set it up. Robert and Bastidas. Hill here to the near side. Fui's going to drop in. Adelsteinson has come all the way up high. Mashinsky on the right wing. Adelsteinson there. Grant inside him. It's going to be the kick by Robert on one hop. Skips right into the arms of Kitchen. The door swung open. And there was Daniel Kitchen to receive it. 17 flat to go in the first. Another substitute coming in for JMU. This is uh, looks like Carell Monroe will come in. Monroe, a senior from Neuchâtel, Switzerland. Mashinsky finds himself on the far side now. 
Knocked out of bounds. Dukes will have the ball. I believe. Yep, it sure will be. Mashinsky just hesitating there. Wasn't quite sure. Inbounds chip back to Mashinsky. But he's got a lot of red guys to work with over there. And it'll be a keeper ball. Sure to join us at halftime. Tracy Smith is, has a conversation with Bjarke Adelsteinson, who uh, teaches us a few things, a little geography, as well as uh, how to say his name. And it goes back to uh, a previous broadcast with our lessons. <laughs> <laughs> Women's soccer, if anybody was paying attention. Yeah, we were here for the women's soccer match on uh, Sunday evening against Virginia Tech. The Hokies came in and took home a 3-1 win. Duke's got a goal in the first half from Stacy Braun McLeod and stayed that way till early in the second, and then the Hokie speed took over, and they end up beating the Dukes 3-1. Bastidas serves it up here, Monroe. Corral still keeps it. Spins it wide. Serves it up. What a good shot considering the angle that he had just to be able to get it that close. Now, I thought the ball had enough side spin to it that it was going to stay in bounds once it landed. But just barely crossed the line. And here comes another substitute for the Dukes. This is Marcus Bjorgheim, a redshirt senior from Bergen, Norway. So getting all the Substitutes working in here. Still a few more yet to possibly get in during the line last 14 and a half minutes. Sent forward. Monroe, he's onside. Monroe with it, takes the blast and hits the inside post for the score. Really good shot by Monroe. Tough angle. Goalie did a good job kitchen by really taking out the angle, but Monroe found the best possible place he could put it on that backside post, literally right off the post and in the back of the net. Good shot by Monroe, especially on the run. Defender crashing in on the left, goalie in front. Great play. So Corral Monroe with his first score of the season. And the Dukes have recaptured the lead 2-1. to one. It occurs in the 31st minute. see how the defense responds and if they give up another goal or if they step up and, and have a big stop here. Hill with it and he'll serve it way across. That's going to be settled down there by Bjorkheim. Marcus sends it wide but a little miscommunication. Mashinsky juked one way. The ball went the other. So Al Steinson with the goal. Now Monroe with the score for the Dukes. And there's a shot well above everything. It's Jamie's fourth goal in the first half this season. Opponents have two, one of those coming tonight by the Cadets. Coming back to the midfield. Barden will put it back on the ground with the forehead. Monroe there. Bjorkheim surveys a bit, now slides it through. He's offside this time is Correll. Smart play by the cadets' defense. It looked like they communicated well with each other. They saw he was making the run and just got, hey, guys, step up for a minute. They stepped up. Of course, the ball was played, and they got the offsides call. Smart defense. Able to make a stop without... Having to use any physical ability to make that stop. Well, for Monroe, that's only his second JMU goal. So he's been waiting a long time. He did have one tally last year. Played in just 14 games with a dozen starts last year. So good to see a lot of his work pay off and that he is rewarded. Here's Mashinsky. Dukes have good numbers. Monroe, oh, just above him. Here's Whitaker. He's going to take a blast. The ricochet comes out and tumbling down. And there is... Whitaker to put it back again as Bastidas had gone to the ground. He was, Bastidas 
was kind of disappointed that he had fallen down, but I think it was fortuitous because uh, where he fell is where the ball blasted right above his shoulders into the net. Doylestown, Pennsylvania native, made up for that shot. He had a great rip right here. It should have scored there. Had nice movement on the ball, and he saw the ball rebound and crashed in, just as VMI did earlier. Found the back of the net. Again, that back left corner has been the sweet spot for the Dukes early on. 12-16. To play here in this first half. I believe that goal can kind of be the icing on the cake for the Dukes. Not saying the game's over early, but they had a lot of momentum, and then those two back to back, and that goal alone just had so much intensity in it. Here's another opportunity this time, just slides right on through. You're right, and this time it's going to be Jonathan Barden with the tally. And now, like, like I said, the guys are really feeling it, and they just want to keep going, and now everybody else wants to join in the the goal scoring game and get their opportunity and we see there just dribble it right through the defense and, and now VMI's really got to be feeling down on ourselves. 1-1 one, one just a minute ago, it's already 4-1 just with a blink of an eye. Well the one goal that VMI scored by the way was the first goal that VMI scored against JMU since 1985. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> They've not played that often since 85. This still sounds like a, a good fact. <laughs> yeah, isn't it? At least for the team you defense. You gotta, you gotta, yeah, exactly. You got to look a little deeper into it. Early on. You know, it's like you know, Notre Dame has never scored on the Dukes in football. How about that? Yeah, it's a, it's a good stat. They've never played, of course. <laughs> you don't have to tell anybody that. <laughs> it's all relative. I'll remember that for Saturday night. Okay. When the Dukes play. Another uh, Catholic university, St. Francis of Pennsylvania, will be here Saturday night which is our next Matazone production. In fact, I hope you can join us. Actually, we've got a lot of men's soccer, particularly late September, early October. Monroe leaves it forward. Bastidas there. Here's Hill. He takes the shot. Oh, almost redirected. That ball was hit so hard. Actually, if he took just a little bit off of it, there's a good chance that Borgheim was going to be able to redirect that into the cage. JMU, wow, the, the shots they're taking now, getting a lot of pace behind them. Really firing them in, getting some ball movement on it. Tough shots for Kitchen to handle. They keep it up. They're going to put a few more goals on the board. Here's Whitebread chasing it down. Did he keep it inbounds? Ah, the late whistle, he was not able to do so. It'll be a throw in for VMI. Before that last play as well, I just thought the Jamie offense was owed a goal the way that they had just great ball movement, pretty balls placed over the top. Just couldn't get the one to find the net. Here's Whitaker who scored the last goal for the Dukes. Jonathan Barton. He also has picked up his second goal for James Madison. Uh, he had one during the 2011 campaign. Only played nine games last year, so didn't have as many opportunities. Ball out in front again but cleared out by VMI. VMI not very organized right now. Really just playing kickball with it when they see it. They're booting it downfield just to get a breather for a minute. And then the JMU offense is right back in their face. Went all the way back to Robert. So Adelsteinson with the goal, Whitaker, Robert, oh, excuse me, make that uh, Monroe. And Barden scoring for JMU. And another sub coming in for the Duke. Subs just will not start stop coming in for James Madison. And the new man for the Dukes wears number eight. That's Eric Schmidt, the sophomore, with an assist this season. Bjorkheim comes out to Mashinsky, back to Bjorkheim. He is on side, but nice recovery. We will see a corner play result, however. That was Bastidas that left the field for the Dukes. Bastidas is one of few that's played 287 minutes, and I believe that's just about every single minute in every game so far. So his first time getting a breather which I believe he deserves one with a 4-1 lead. That goal by Whitaker, by the way, the first as a Duke, the former Pitt Panther. 
Played there for two seasons in his second year with the Dukes. He's played 275 minutes this season as well, so strong outing for him early in 2013. Mashensky was trying to set the serve up, put it on a tee for Hill. Hill did a nice job of pursuing it afterwards. And Hill will have it now on the far sideline. Schmidt will lap, lap underneath him. He'll go forward. Now the Dukes will release it a bit. And the long serve comes to the near side. Monroe chests it down, sends it back. This is Whitaker. Whitaker circles back. Now we have a few volleyball broadcasts coming up, but Mashinsky looks like he could be a setter on a volleyball team. Really good job of just really placing the ball where the guys need it and can really take care of it for there. If our first volleyball will be a week from Friday. The Dukes take on Wake Forest, part of the JMU Invitational. This weekend, the Dukes head to North Carolina. Dukes having their early struggles with uh, some youngsters in the lineup, but uh, got pretty good confidence that they'll get their, get their act together. Especially tough when you lose people like Natalie Abel and Danielle Herb. Herb. Absolutely. The face and, of a wine tropping. Yeah, Megan Weekman also. Here's a blast by Hill. Knocked down, ricocheted out, and cleared out. And when Kurt says blast, <laughs> they're definitely blast. They're coming out of a cannon. And he'll put, uh, put some mustard on that as we dip below six, uh, seven minutes here in the first half. A little bit of lightning off in the distance as well. well. Let's hope it stays in the distance. We've already had one lightning delay thus far this season. Six and a half to go in this first half of play. White Bread will screen the ball off. It'll end up out of bounds. JMU ball on the far side in front of the Dukes bench. Good showing here tonight by the JMU fans at U Park. Really started to fill in since the game started. Yeah, when we first started the <laughs> very start of the game, just a handful, but uh, it has picked up just a comfortable crowd here tonight. And I suspect we have a pretty good crowd watching on Matazone, which is uh, one reason we chose a weeknight game to present to you, because you know, a lot of family and friends don't necessarily get a chance to come in during the weekday. And hopefully the uh, VMI family and friends are also watching him this evening. In fact, uh, if you want to join us, we're going to use my email address here tonight. Uh, as opposed to we normally use Matazone. I'm having a little difficulty uh, getting to that one. So if uh, you want to send us an email, we'll give you a shout out uh, during halftime or in the second half. And you can send it to my email address, which is Dudley, D U D L E Y C M at jmu.edu. That's D U D L E Y C M at jmu.edu. We'll make you part of our halftime show here, presented to you by. University Outpost. Monroe, oh, there's a tug, and that'll be a foul. And the intensity really starting to pick up both teams, getting a little chippy, especially the VMI Dutz. Getting a little frustrated. Yep, a yellow card comes out and goes to Alec Rich, the freshman from Richmond, Virginia. And I believe Alec Rich was actually talked to just before that onside kick before the ball was played back in from the offsides. Hill. Oh, he's got a strong leg. Serves it out. And here's the shot out in front. Monroe just misses his second opportunity after the ball bounds around a bit right there on the near post where the play began. A couple of players collide and I think Kitchen may be feeling some pain right now as he remains down on his knees. Goalie, it's a, it's a tough position to play. Time has been called and by the official, and we'll stop the clock with 441. Look at, like he got hit from every angle here as the ball is coming across. Yeah, it looked like he may have got kicked in the, in the forehead inadvertently as the ball was coming across the middle, and even the Jamie players on the ground were just trying to get something up and get a body part on it. Yeah, they were just flapping down there trying to, <laughs> yeah. trying to make contact. Don't Did care what you hit it with or how it goes in, just get into the back of the net. 
Dukes now with 15 shots. The only real opportunities for the cadets were free kicks. Not much in the, the flow of the game. Hill will get called this time. Flo, the flow though really getting disturbed here. A lot of fouls here and there and off sides as well. A lot of stoppages. Kitchen keeps it on the ground right to the feet of Hill. Nice sliding push forward. He's coming in. Alec Rich once again. I'm not sure if Kitchen meant to keep that on the ground. It looked like he was trying to go over the top, but yeah, that didn't make a lot of didn't like make a lot of sense under the circumstance. Go over the top, let somebody run for it, try to create a run. Dukes had their four backs in the correct position though, so it would have been a difficult thing to do either way. Maybe he thought he could just kind of sneak it through by keeping it low. Long ball. That'll be a handball, I believe. Are they going to call a foul or is that a handball? Foul will be called. Looked like uh, Robert had kind of put the hand or the elbow up there intentionally. Down to two and a half, approaching two and a half minutes. Again, we'll hear from Tracy Smith as she has an interview with Bjarke Adelsteinson. At halftime, we'll take a look at our statistics, take a look at our first half highlights. We've got a lot, uh, a lot of goals, five goals in the first 45 minutes, at least at this point. Maybe we may get another one here before the end and have some more highlights to talk about. Good job of splitting the defense there for the cadets. This is Chase Barnett. The Dukes will clear it out. Barnett, out, a senior out of Roanoke. Over the top it goes, looking for Carell Monroe. Borkheim trying to set him up. Corral already with the one goal. All the way back to Morton. I wonder what the how the, the psyche of a keeper changes as you know if your team's got a four to one lead in the first half. If it's uh, you know a little more relaxed and a little loose, certainly you don't want to break your concentration and focus. But does it come a little easier? There's a nice through ball and coming all the way out is Kitchen to punt it forward. One keeper to the other. It's like a nice game of pinball, just hitting it back and forth. Under 60 seconds to go in the first. Maybe at some point during the year we'll have to meet up with Kyle Morton and really ask him about that psyche and how it affects and changes throughout the game. The psychology of sport, just as important as the physical and mental parts of it. I mean, for Kyle, last year in the CA tournament, had had a rough outing, but uh, you know had all year to think about it because that was their last uh, regular season, last game of the season, and had to push that behind him and come back out and start fresh and anew. A little chip up into the air, punched out by Kitchen, Mashinsky, Hill. Still some time here. The Dukes can settle, and a foul called against the Dukes. Eric Schmidt climbing the back. Don't like VMI is going to look to play this. Just let the time run out. Yep, that'll do the first half of play as we have had a lot of scoring in our first 45 minutes. The Dukes took the first lead in the 13th minute on a goal by Bjarke Adelsteinsen on a corner play from Adam Bastidas. BMI came back less than a minute later and tied us up at a goal apiece, but the Dukes have ripped in three since that time, and they now have the three to make that three-goal lead the four-to-one advantage. We're going to take a timeout. We'll come back, and uh, we'll find out a little bit about Bjarke Adelsteinson as he visits with Tracy Smith. That and more coming up on our halftime. Duke Sports Center presented to you by 
University Outpost as you're watching JMU Men's Soccer in HD Live on Matazone, presented by the JMU Alumni Association. I knew going to JMU would be more about just getting a master's. I just knew that it was the place for me. I feel as though that I'm a part of the institution. You will never meet a stranger. Everyone is always willing to help you out and to help you through your graduate experience here at James Madison University. The graduate school here is a, is a great choice. The education that you receive is top notch. It's one of the best in the country. And from here, from here, everything is possible. The Residence Inn by Marriott provides guests with plenty of room. Room to recharge. Room to prepare. Room to relax. Stay one night or as long as you like. The Residence Inn by Marriott provides each guest with amenities tailored to their individual needs. Spacious suites with all the comforts of home. Because it's not just a room, it's a residence. Instead of asking yourself, where did those four years go, think about where the next 40 will take you. Be involved at Madison. Dukes from day one, alumni for life. Well, welcome back to University Park. We're on the campus of James Madison University, the Dukes of JMU, with a 4-1 to lead here at halftime. Halftime presented to you by University Outpost. Kurt Dudley and Houston Stutz with you. Tanisha Watkins also with us here tonight. She's going to get a chance to talk with the Dukes head coach, Dr. Tom Martin, in just a little while. Well, the Archie Steinson last year was the Virginia State Rookie of the Year, the Defensive back for the Dukes here in uh, men's soccer has certainly came in and made a, a big impact on the program. And as Houston said, an older sophomore. Heck, he was an older freshman for all that. Uh, for all that's worth. And earlier this week, our own Tracy Smith got a chance to talk with a Duke sophomore. Tracy. I'm Tracy Smith, and I'm here with Bjarki Adelsteinson, who was named Rookie of the Year last year. So, Bjarki, tell me a little bit about last season. Uh. Last season was strange coming in as a freshman from Iceland, but uh, yeah, it was it was a decent season for me. I play, I felt like I played well. Uh, um, a little bit disappointing uh, for the Jamie soccer team as uh, as uh, we wanted to win the CA, but definitely looking forward to this season. Give me one reason why I should attend a Jamie men's soccer game. Um, you should come to watch quality soccer. With uh, at a great facility, and we promise to give you a great, entertaining match every single time. Do you have a song that you like to listen to as your warm-up song before a game? Yeah, I actually have one, but it's. Um, should I pronounce it? <laughs> I listen to uh, Jon Jonsson. He's uh, he's an Icelandic artist, one of my favorites. What was the most difficult part about your transition from Iceland to the States? I always say it's the the climate, the the heat in August when I come in for preseason, it's ridiculous. Never exper experienced humidity like this. Okay, now for Kurt, can you explain the difference between the climate of Greenland and Iceland? <laughs> Iceland is green, Kurt, and Greenland is ice. So we pronounce your name Bjarki Adelsteinsson. What is the proper version? And we're going to see if you can teach me how to properly say it. All right. The proper pronunciation is Bjarki Adelsteinsson. Bjarki Adelsteinsson. You, the, the D is the, the F. The F? F. F. Bjarki Adelsteinsson. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> With Bjarki Adelsteinsson, I'm Tracy Smith from Madison HD Sportsnet. Uh, thank you very much, Tracy, and I appreciate the geography lesson, uh, the climate. I guess Iceland is green and Greenland is ice, as you told me on Sunday night. I so <laughs> so Bjarki confirmed it since he is from Iceland. Um, Teresa Rainier, the all-time assist playmaker in the JMU women's soccer history, she was watching the other night. Uh, she's playing professionally overseas. In fact, she's coming uh, 
She'll be back uh, here in the U.S. Uh, late in September, early October. She's going to come out. We might uh, have to put her up here with us uh, for a, a little bit and chat with her uh, somewhat. She'll probably giggle a lot uh, if we know, know <laughs> Teresa. But, uh, yeah, that was, that was good. And, and also to try to, uh, well, say his name. I, when, I, when he first came last year, I came out to an early practice, and I saw it well. I knew, of course, that he was coming to Madison, so I got with uh, associate head coach Tom Foley. I said, Tom, can you tell me how he pronounces his name? And I thought that uh, Coach Foley was about ready to cough up a furball trying to, <laughs> try to say his name. I, mean, it was, I said, never mind, I'll, I'll ask him. So we've kind of Americanized it, and uh, we try to put a little bit of accent on it. We've had some, actually, uh, Ava Hanna's daughter was uh, a swimmer for the Dukes, actually swam for the Iceland Olympic team. Uh, just this past uh, Summer Olympics. So uh, we, we've had our share of those from uh, the Scandinavian countries. and uh, But we're, we're still struggling to uh, learn how to pronounce a lot of the, the Swedish and Icelandic and Norwegian names. But uh, anyway, it's a little culture for you here in our University of Diversity, right? It's yep. not Martinsville, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> not very diverse down there. <laughs> not at all. Well, you're watching uh, the JMU men's soccer dukes leading here 4-1. to one. Uh, at halftime, of course, presented to you by the JMU Alumni Association. The JMU Alumni Association hosts more than 300 annual events on campus and across the country. You can stay connected to your alma mater and register for an event today. Learn more at jmu.edu slash alumni slash events. Speaking of events, well, you can join us on October the 11th for the Hall of Fame. That's right, the Hall of Fame coming up October the 11th, 6.30, and your opportunity to bid on autographed items and one-of-a-kind JMU merchandise. You can reserve your spot by visiting jmusports.com slash auction or call during normal business hours, 568-DUKE. That's 568-3893, or 3853, excuse me, 3853. Here at halftime, the Dukes with the 4-1 uh, to advantage. And uh, coming up on our... Future Matazone Productions. Of course, uh, our next production will be the JMU Dukes men's, uh, the football Dukes uh, taking on the Red Flash of St. Francis. That'll be this coming Saturday night. Houston and I will be there, and uh, we'll start our pregame coverage at 5:35. Kickoff will be at 6 o'clock. Dukes looking to pick up their second win of the season. Mark your calendar for the upcoming men's soccer presentations here on Matazone. We'll have audio for you against the Stetson Hatters in a couple of weeks, September the 22nd. Uh, the Hatters come to town out of Deland, Florida. Then we have uh, three video productions for you, October 2nd versus Loyola, October 6th versus Northeastern, and October 9th versus the Delaware Blue Hens. That's all coming up in the very near future here on Matazone HD Sportsnet. We're going to take another commercial break. When we come back, we'll take a look at our halftime stats, our highlights in the first 45 minutes. And Kenesha Watkins is going to find Dr. Tom Martin and get his thoughts on the first 45 minutes of tonight's match as you're watching JMU Men's Soccer here in HD live on Matazone, presented to you by the JMU Alumni Association. Jim and John are both covered by the nation's best networks. Jim uses Entelos Wireless. John does not. Jim saves money every month. John does not. And thanks to those savings, Jim has money left over for hula hoops, a little mood music, and access to the rooftop pool. John does not. And Telos Wireless, the difference is savings. Switch now and get unlimited data, text, and talk for just $79.99. Well, welcome back as the Jamie Dukes with a 4-1 win. Oh, excuse me, 4-1 halftime lead, I should say, recapping our first half scoring. First of all, the Dukes uh, got a, a, a header from Bjarke Adel Steinson on a corner play. Uh, the assist came from Adam Bastidas as uh, he started the corner as you face the goal to the right. And it uh, was headed in by Adel Steinson to the left post. 1-0 JMU, 12-29 into the match. But it was very shortly after that that the Kidats got the ball back 
Fielded out and there putting it back in was Wes Sope. Kyle Forche got the assist. First goal of the season. And it was two, uh, one to one at that time. Now here's Corral Monroe as he gets his first goal of the season, his second as a Duke. And that came at 30-39, uh, that is. So that made it 2-1, James Madison. And shortly after that, a couple of moments later, we see another goal score, this one by Mike Whitaker as he sails it right over the ducking head of Adam Bastidas, 3-1 at that point. And we follow it up. The last goal is tallied by John Barton, and that was his first goal of the season. Dukes had with 15 shots to two for VMI, eight shots on goal for the Dukes, two for the Cadets. Kitchen with four saves, Morton with one. Dukes have been whistled for five fouls, VMI for four. Six corners for Madison, one for VMI, and the Dukes have been whistled for five off sides. In our score, four to one here on Madison HD Sportsnet. Been a warm night as well, so the substitution for the Duke certainly has to be helpful as well because uh, they have been able to go deep on the substitutions here this evening. And we're going to send you down to uh, field side in just a moment as Tanisha Watkins has uh, the Duke's head coach. That is Dr. Tom Martin. And I'm back I'm here now. with Coach Martin. Now, Coach, in your opinion, how was the first half of this game? It was kind of a half of two halves. The first 10, 15 minutes, we were flat. We scored a nice goal, but we relaxed, and we gave them one. And they're a team that thrives on emotion, and you can't let them come back that early. And then we made some substitutions, which gave us a great lift off the bench, and uh, we had fresh legs. We played the right balls in behind. We looked pretty good. And how did it feel having VMI score a goal right after JMU got their first one? Uh, to be candid, awful, because right after a team scores is usually when you're most vulnerable. That's where you have to really stay switched on to handle that, that lull that comes, and we didn't. And now that JMU is up 4-1, to one, how hard is it not to get comfortable with the lead? Uh, it's never big enough, but I think the next goal is really important. If we finish it, to be candid, we should close out the game. If they finish the first one, uh, the whole momentum swing has changed again. So the next one's pretty important. Thanks, Coach. Back thank to you. you, Houston and Kurt. All right, thank you, Dr. Martin, and thank you, Tanisha Watkins. Dukes with the 4-1 to lead. 45 minutes yet of NCAA men's soccer to play here tonight. Again, you can send us an email to uh, my email address if you'd like to join us on the broadcast tonight kind of an indirect kick it is. Uh, you can do so. Dudley, D-U-D-L-E-Y-C-M at J-M-U dot E-D-U. That's D-U-D-L-E-Y-C-M at J-M-U dot E-D-U. There you go on the screen right now. Send that on out to us. And uh, like to know where you're watching from, who you might be rooting for. And uh, we'll give you a shout out. Here this evening on Matazone HD Sportsnet presented to you again by the JMU Alumni Association. While well, we're throwing out the kickers for the, the JMU Alumni Association, if you're going to be in town Saturday for the football game against St. Francis, they're going to be hosting a tailgate on the festival lawn. So be sure to stop by all students, free food, free drinks, and, of course, alumni as well. Uh, Kelly Germain wants to hear my pronunciation. I guess of uh, Bjarke Adelsteinson, huh? <laughs> the Icelandic version. That's though. right. Well, I think he, I think <laughs> that it's like Anthelsteinson, something of that sort, a little closer. But it, you know, I just I have a hard time with it. <laughs> it is a, a very tough you know, name to say. And it's funny, Kelly writes that uh, to me. She hit uh, hit us up with a Twitter here, um, and she said, of course, with her, she was the second of the Germains. So it wasn't uncommon for me to call her Kimmy early in her career, you know. So uh, I know she got over that okay. Also, Paul Wyatt is listening. Said he got a shout-out from uh, yours truly. Indeed, tuned in. Not too worried, though. Dukes have more technical ability than last year. Paul, what's that say about you, man? <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, Paul, uh, Paul was a very strong player. Uh, ball came off his foot, and if uh, you were on the back side of that, uh, you were probably battered and bruised as uh, the strength of Paul Wyatt had an outstanding career here with the Dukes at JMU and made an impact early and continued with that impact. So away we are underway here in this second half. Looks like VMI had a, a little bit of a talking to in the locker room, and now they're going to try and turn around and play a little possession. We haven't seen that much from them at all tonight. But so far, they've controlled it the entire well, minute that we've been. Well, and as you said, uh, you know, once the Dukes got the two-goal lead, once it was 3-1, to one, it just became just kick the ball wherever, and they didn't, they didn't have any organization whatsoever. And, uh, of course, the Dukes just kind of like sharks in the water at that time and put, put all those goals in succession in. But uh, possessing it, you know, sort of like uh, sometimes your offense is your best defense. It is the defense really second half didn't have to do much of anything but boot the ball back up to the forwards and let them take charge. Hill all the way out. Here's Barden. Barden across the midfield stripe. Leaves it nicely touched there to Jordan. Caroms off a VMI cadet out of bounds. Throw in. Here's Fui. Knocked out of bounds again. Dukes will just progress up the field. Looking to see if uh, we have any JMU women's soccer players here in attendance tonight. It's one thing, it's always a strong showing, whether you're men's soccer, women's soccer, whether it be basketball players, football players, other soccer players, or, or whatever. Duke supporting Dukes, exactly. that's what they call it. Hill. Like, yeah, and got a lot of students sitting right in front of us as well. Bastidas. Bastidas with a drive, and it's just deflected off the hands of Kitchen off the end line. It'll be a corner play for Bastidas and company. 5'9", 190-pound senior Richard seniors, or excuse me, 160-pound Richard seniors. Really came to play tonight, which is why he's one of the leaders on the team. Every opening he gets, he's firing that ball in. Kitchen doing a good job of just trying to keep up with everything coming his way. To the back post, the header is off the mark. Roppert got the head on it. I'm surprised the VMI defense let that ball really fall all the way down to the back side forwards. They just kind of watched it sell over their heads. Yep, you see it right there on the replay here on Madison HD Sportsnet. Coming back at you now, right into the midfield play. Hill, the layer game going on. Now it settles to the turf, Barden with it there. Barden slides it back, this is Adelsteinson. Bjarke leaves it for Hill. Hill wide to the right side to the other Englishman and that's Tom Fui. Fui off the orange shoes, comes back. One of these fellows were in front of the TV last night watching the U.S. and Mexico in the World Cup qualifying match. I'm sure they wore a great showing, though, by USA. Got the big win in Columbus, qualified for the FIFA World Cup next year. So that's a good thing. I know those guys were happy about it, especially after the result from Honduras. That allowed them to clinch that. Lane and Donovan and Eddie Johnson. Now Johnson was phenomenal last yeah, night. He was looking good. At one time when he got up uh, on a header try, he didn't capitalize on it, but he had some altitude. Like that right there? Yeah, similar. Just a little bit of altitude. And he, he had the ups there. And, I mean, he... <laughs> Would have been an impressive goal had he been able to capitalize on it, but it was impressive just the athletic play to begin with. Whitebread can't catch up to it. Comes out here on the turf and into the track area. I'm really waiting for the, the students here to catch on to the soccer trends around the world and start bringing in drums and, and all sorts well, of Well, you know, those they do the, the voo-voos. They've got them here, but they... You can't bring them in on your own. They have to be provided by JMU. There's a shot. Ricochets up. Nice stop by Kitchen to deflect that ball up. Bastidas 
Nice touch. Back to Adam again. We got a foul called against the Dukes. I don't know if Grant. I don't know if you've ever been to any DC United games or anything like that. I went there a few times, saw the United play uh, uh -huh. the LA Galaxy and, and the Screaming Eagles. They come with bass drums and, and just everything that they can get their hands on to make noise. Well, the NCAA doesn't allow you to bring in artificial noisemakers. You can give them out as promotional pieces. So they bought the Vuvuzelas, and they've been giving out about 20 per game. Um, you know, and I'm sure if this was a much tighter match, uh, maybe a, a bigger rivalry, Maybe, uh, you know, JMU and Drexel later in the year, or something like that. Uh, they might be honking on them the whole time. <laughs> but tonight they're only using them sparingly. When they score the goal, or it seems to me like they're picking one person off the, the team to really pick on the most. Here's the cross, and into the hands, Kyle Morton. It's really the best opportunity BMI's had all night in the flow of the game without a free, yeah, that free was, kick. That was McCauley who carried it all the way down to the end line. And a nice serve all the way up top. This is Fooey. Fooey gets pushed off the ball a bit. If he could have stayed on the ball just a little bit longer, no body backside for the Cadets defense. Dukes also had another player crashing down in on the opposite wing, and that would have been Jordan. That one's out of bounds. It would have been an easy goal for the Dukes if they could have got the cross and could have kept the ball down. Adel Steinson uses the long stride to easily poke that one away. And we get a whistle. Offsides for the Dukes. Another offsides call. It's been a good defensive trap for the Cadets, but, you know, Coach Dr. Martin cannot be happy with the offsides calls that the Dukes have had. Handful of crowd members uh, getting into something down there. Good ball, just a little misread by the Ford. Morton going to use all six seconds he has before he has to boot the ball. Pinballs around a bit right to the feet of Josh Grant. Wide it goes. Fui serves it up. A little too long. Jordan was there. Jordan will chase now. Sends it back. Mid-range pass. It comes out. So I'll pay with the goal. Number 17. You'll see him. There's a nice serve to the opposite side. Fui will get to it and settle it down. Just patience there, that foot across, and headed back out. One thing for the Dukes, it's been a positive night. They've been very relaxed offensively. Not too much they've had pro problems with, almost like a, a pickup game. Playing the ball over the top very nicely. Seen a few one-on-ones. It's been a good job offensively tonight for the forwards and midfielders attacking. Hill with a blast from way out. That shot had no loft on it, just <laughs> on a beeline straight for the back of the net, but missed to the left. You know, we put uh, Megan Cox side by side with uh, Cameron Stark to kick field goals at Bridgeforce Stadium last week. Maybe we need to put uh, Megan next to Mr. Hill here in a little, another level of competition. I'd like to see what they could do with the soccer ball and how far they could put it through the, the uprights. Especially at, at Bridgeforth because you have the turf grass and you also have the yard line marker so we can accurately measure it. <laughs> Bit tougher out here. Chipped in. Bastidas tried to position himself and he leaves it there for Grant to slam it in. 
That was a slam. I'm surprised there's not a hole burnt in the back of the net. From that close range, Grant got all of it. And the Jamie Dukes just really trying to take charge of this game. Five to one. 19 shots. Two for the Cadets. Both of those came in the first half. Only one save tonight for Kyle Morton. He's had it fairly easy. Six for Kitchen, and that was not one of them there. 34-53 remains. Grant gets in on the scoring. It's now 5-1. JMU. Bastidas, I think, may get a, an assist on that play. Josh Grant leads the team in goals. That's his third of the season. Just took six shots. Five of those have been on target. So he doesn't waste. He's pretty efficient, would you say? Yeah, very efficient. He, he's, uh, he's very green with his shots. Which is a good thing. Just shows he's not out there taking shots to take them to just put something on the stat sheet. Adel Steinson gets in the way, and Whitebread will clean it up, sends it up over the top. Here's a run for it. Grant. Farnholt was back there with him. Now it comes up. Bastidas will send it forward. Fui wide. Leaves it forward. Was trying to slip it through to Grant. That last goal by Grant, just a, a victim of the VMI defense, leaving the ball laying around in the 18. Not enough people crashing in on it and putting pressure. Allowed JMU to take just a few too many dance moves in the 18, and that left it open for Josh Grant to rip it home. Grant seven goals last year and one assist. So he's now in double figures in his JMU career. Currently a junior. Was on the all-rookie squad last year since it was his first year of playing. Not sure how they actually have him academically. It, this is his junior season. Or maybe going back to maybe some schooling in England possibly that elevates his academic status. But he was uh, still on the all-conference rookie squad last year. Twice named the CA Rookie of the Week. JMU seven substitutes up and warming up on the sideline. Maybe an offensive change. Typically don't see too many changes on the back line. So that would change just about every, all the forwards and mids if they happen to do so. Here's a foul called against JMU and a yellow card. Not going out to uh, Jonathan Barden, I do believe. Let's see if we get a chance to. Maybe watch that again, possibly. And yeah, here we go. Coming in, yep, Barden. Three Dukes cautioned in the last game against UNCG, but Barden not one of them. That was Hill, Grant, and Jordan. And yeah, the Kedets, uh, I know they have a couple. Andrew Starnes, a sophomore, is not eligible for this game. Also, you typically do see Travis Borky, a sophomore from Mechanicsville, but he is also not eligible for tonight. Fui off the chest. Not sure if those were due to that scrappy match on the sixth or what. I'm sure the coaching staff cannot be pleased with the way they played, and or at least scrappiness of the team that night. White bread leaves it in for Jordan. Jordan spins, almost opened up for the shot, leaves it instead back for Barden. Barden takes an off-angle shot. Shot way off target, had no chance of going in. Good solid rip though. Uh, 
Couple of substitutes coming in. Uh, David Harper, Harpin, that is, a sophomore from Suffolk, Virginia, comes into the lineup for VMI. And for the for the Dukes, they also had a sub come in. And that was uh, Michael Russo, sophomore from McLean, Virginia. Harpin out of Peninsula Catholic. That's uh, where my wife went to school. We get PC alumni stuff all the time. <laughs> Now this one approaching the two-thirds mark as we're under 30 minutes and 30 seconds remaining. 5-1, JMU led 4-1 at the break. Added another goal here after halftime. Nice feed there by Jordan, and he expected Fui to continue on. I think Fui had downshifted a little bit. VMI now just really trying to spread the field and pass the ball around and possess it as much as they can without allowing Dukes to make the game any worse than it already is. But somehow the JMU offense finds the ball each time. Jordan this time sends it wide to Fui. Was very patient with it. Fui puts a lot of air under it, looking for the opposite side where Bastidas was positioned. Said it's going to come out and a boot forward. That off the foot of Hunter Morgan. Morton wheels it out. Kyle, 6'4", 190, a sophomore, Westchester, Pennsylvania, Reed Henderson High School. Jim played a lot last year as a freshman. And sent in and ripped in by Fui as they set it up for the left-footed shot. Good shot by Fui, just crossing the top of the 18, about 20 yards out, just a bit too high on the rip. Talking about this series, and although we didn't know where the first four matches were played, we, we, of those 11 matches that we know were played in Harrisonburg, the Dukes have won all of them throughout the years. Not too far of a drive down. 81 to get to Lexington. Actually, a very nice drive. Straight down 81. You know, if you actually go down South Main Street, you just kind of keep on keep going. Keep on down. going. You can, absolutely. You'll run right through the middle of the campus. Thing yep, too. Route 11 takes you right on through. That was the main thoroughfare before the building of 81. Nice try by Jordan there. And BMI right next door, actually side by side with Washington and Lee University, which both of those for, well, their origins, they were all male schools. I'm not sure, probably a number of years now that both schools have been admitting women. Probably longer than I want to remember. Of course, there was quite a bit of debate over it with VMI. Washington Lee is a private school, but they elected to go ahead and start admitting, wi admitting women. Have a pretty good uh, women's tennis team, in fact, and that's not a surprise. Just like Jamie started out all women and decided to let us guys in. That's right, <laughs> yep. I'm not complaining a bit. Now, VMI and enrollment of 1,650, give or take a few. Member of the Big South. They were picked to finish 11th in the Big South during the preseason coaches poll. Only uh, had two wins last year, 214 and one.
Again, Jamie's put one goal in the back of the net here in the second half. Shots by period. VMI is outscored in the second half 32 to 5. So second half's a bit tougher for them. But JMU has yet to take advantage of it to the full extent. Just one goal. A couple Grant, shots. Yeah, Grant was onside that time, but the ball was well beyond his reach. Good stuff for Kitchen in the second half, though. He has 15 saves in the second half alone this season. He's had to work in the kitchen a little harder, I think, in the second half, has he not? Yeah, yeah. I think it's gotten a little hotter in the second half for him. Another sub coming in for the Dukes. And that'll be Daniel Simpson, redshirt junior from Warrington, Virginia, out of Kettle Run. Good formation setting up there for VMI. Then backing it up, though, as the Dukes got their defenders in good spacing. Going over the top, Robert Pui settles down, though, by VMI. Trying to slip it through, does so. Whitebread will track it down, keeps it in bounds. Nice ball coming up. It comes to Grant. Grant with a quick touch as Bastidas on the run. Gets it over the top here. Jordan was in pursuit and will be kicked out of bounds. David Harpin out of Suffolk, Virginia. Horn was sounding for some reason, but I don't see any substitutes coming in. Or was that from over on the other field? That may be some uh, intramural playing going on. I think on. it was, actually, because I see the clock has gone to zero, and <laughs> it's 1-0, some team against another team. That's your out-of-town scoreboard. <laughs> and they header the second goal of the night for Josh Grant. Was it Fui that crossed it over? Nicely done. Either way, we'll get a chance to, to see it all over again. So Grant, four goals on the season here. We'll look at number four. Simpson leaves it over. Yep. Off the, uh, the orange shoes. Grant. Boom. Nicely done. Headed it right to the ground. Kept it low and away from the keeper. Grant with a second goal of the night. He's the first with multiple goals this evening. He comes in the 67th minute. Dukes go back to the, to the bench and... You'll see number 20 in there now for JMU. That's Jamal Umar, redshirt junior from Herndon with an assist thus far this season. And it's now 6-1, James Madison. With 23 and 45 to go. Bastidas getting tangled up there a little bit. And in the battle. He'll get called for the foul. Umar coming in for the Dukes out of uh, Chantilly High School, a former Charger. I think they wore purple too, if I'm not mistaken. Chantilly purple and white. Jamal and Steven, I believe. Let me double check that. You are correct, sir. Uh, they were freshman roommates as well. I don't know if they picked it that way or... If the coaches assigned it that way. They may have. Probably known each other for a while. Of course, playing at Chantilly. I don't know if they they may have played on the same club team up there. I believe they played on a, a D.C. United club team up there. At some point, they were telling me. That's a whistle, and we're going to stop the clock. We have a down Kedet. Looks like it may be a muscle cramp or something. Yeah, probably just a cramp, stretch yeah. it out. I'm pretty sure that's what it is, just judging. It is a very warm night. Today may have been the muggiest day of uh, August and September. That was number five, Stephen Mallon. 
the 6'3", 195-pound senior defender from Hampton, Virginia. So coming in now is Eric Eric Fries comes back in out of Elizabethtown High School, Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania. And Mallon out of Kickatan. I was talking about uh, Macy Brooks earlier. That's where Macy went, was Kickatan High School. I was going to save the pronunciation for you. Well, there are folks that like to say Kickofton. It's a, an Indian word. I'm probably better at Indian than I am at uh, Iceland. We'll brush up on your <laughs> Hawaiian. Yeah, we, that's right. For St. Francis. Did you see how many they have? I counted. They, they have a ton. I, I think there's 11 players from Hawaii on St. Francis' squad. It, it's kind of weird. You look at their starting uh, 11 on both sides of the ball, and it's either Pennsylvania or Hawaii. <laughs> you have a few New Jersey, a few Florida scattered in, but Pennsylvania or Hawaii are the two need strong to, Need states. to talk to their SID and find out exactly what the Hawaiian con uh, connection is. Yeah, a lot of them from Honolulu. That is the one Hawaiian city yeah, I can't you, pronounce you in do, Maui. <laughs> you, you do have a lot of uh, Samoans uh, that uh, you know, are very good offensive linemen, good football players, a couple of uh, linebackers as well. Monte Tiao. Yep. Terrence Apted, who is actually on the um, student athlete uh, student athlete services staff here at JMU. Terrence is American Samoan, and he played offensive line for the Dukes. Maybe you have to run some of the pronunciations. So that's a him. good idea. I may go see him tomorrow. <laughs> because, in fact, he was from. Uh, it looked like Pago Pago, but <laughs> it was um, it was pronounced differently. It's like Pow Pow. American Samoa. I saw that. And it, it just really surprised me. Yeah, because the way that the way it reads and the way it's pronounced, usually two different things. Sort of like Edelsteinson. <laughs> I'll stick to Maui and uh, Chaminade, and the only reasons <laughs> I know those are because they're in the EA Sports Maui Invitational every year. Source when the Silver Swords beat uh, Virginia, and that way back when Ralph Sampson, who is a Harrisonburg native, was on the Virginia team that that Division Three program beat, shocked everybody. And they beat Texas this year, I believe did, it was. Did they really? Oh, that's right. Yes, they did. Nice run on the far side. This is Boyd Reed. Forgot to check him in. Boyd out of Canada. Sets it up for Umar. Umar goes tumbling down. Here's a shot, and we get a whistle. They're going to call a foul on Umar. It looked like he was just going straight for the net. Just happened to take a VMI cadet with him. Boyd Reed, a 6'3", 185-pound junior from Ajax, Ontario, out of Pickering. I'm not sure if Kitchen had a zero on his uniform the whole time or if that's a new keeper. Is oh. that Kaplan? That's a good question. It is a number zero on the, the that may be. uniform. That may be Zach Kaplan, actually. What we can do. Let me go. 5'11", 180 pound sophomore goalkeeper from Virginia Beach, Virginia. Went to Kempsville High School. Also the same high school as Denzel Bowles, a former Texas A&M transfer and Jamie Duke basketball player. It's playing overseas now. That is Kaplan. In fact, he has been in the entire second half. So good eyes. I had not uh, had not noticed that. A former Kempsville chief. Shot by Umar right into the waiting arms of Kaplan. Being a sophomore, he might be a little too young to remember Denzel Bowles. Probably, well, yeah, maybe. maybe. Unless uh, he liked watching basketball when he was in middle school. You know, where I actually started watching soccer was, um, ow, that must have hurt, was at James Barry Robinson High School, which was a boys' boarding school, which is probably about three and a half miles from Kempsville High School, actually located on Newtown Road. 
No, I'm sorry. Uh, locate on Kempsville Road. Newtown and Kempsville crossed in the neighborhood that I grew up in in Norfolk. And I could, uh, I could actually get to Kempsville High School quicker than I could get to my own high school. But it was in Virginia Beach, and I lived in Norfolk. Well, I have to say the JMU soccer program is kind of partly the reason I'm here today. As a JMU Duke, I used to go to their soccer camp back in oh, early really? stages of high school. Oh, and wow. I came right when they had just built the, the East Campus dorms. That's where we stayed at. And ate all our meals and festival and, and so forth. And practice on the complex, the old complex now. But came here for camp and kind of fell in, the place, fell in love with the place and, and been here ever since. So you came to soccer camp. Did you come to band camp? Did not. Oh. So we won't get any band camp stories from you. <laughs> I, I do that now, but <laughs> didn't then. I was here for soccer camp every year. Tyler Durbin has checked in for the Dukes. He's got a goal this season. He's a sophomore from Burke, Virginia. And he, too, I believe, uh, wore purple as a scholastic athlete for the Lake Braddock Bruins. Marcus Bjorgheim back in for the Dukes. And I thought I saw somebody else sneak in here. It was that... Um, Monroe, did he come back in with that group too? Well, we have uh, Umar, Jamal Umar, Marcus Bjorgheim, Boyd Reed up front uh, in the middle. It is uh, Simpson and Bastidas. Reed's actually dropped back to the middle as well. And Michael Russo. Monroe is deep. Robert Adelsteinson. And here to the near side, just did check in, was Tyler Durbin. Durbin with a header goal. For his first tally as a Duke. Header goals are always special. Dukes have now outshot the Kidets 22 to 3. Two of those were first half shots for the Kidets. It's only one shot here in the second half, but Kitchen and Kaplan are working. Pretty hard back in the net. Seven saves for the two keepers. Only one all night long for Morton. So speaks testaments for the offense and defense for JMU. Defense not allowing the cadets back there to get any good shots off. While the offense has really maintained the ball just about the entire game and took charge of possession. Really controlled the midfield well early on and, and have continued to do so. Did uh, get some emails from a few folks there, Houston. I just have to know which email folder to open up. They've probably been sitting there for a while. <laughs> In fact, they have. Uh, not surprised. We did get one from north of the border. As uh, we did hear from Boyd Reed's family. It's great to have the live videos of men's soccer games. And uh, great to get the shout-out to the alumni, of course, uh, to the Alumni Association for sponsoring Matazone. And they're watching the game up in Ajax, Canada. Of course, you already heard from Kelly Germain. Shout out to Chris Smith, JMU Athletic Men's Soccer, and the men's soccer team, of course. Uh, Smith is the athletic trainer, which we give him props during the uh, starting lineups, actually. You may not be aware, but we do that. A uh, great way to start the season with this uh, Matazone broadcast. And they're watching from the California desert as our Canadian friend Boyd Reed attempts from the right side. That's Larry and Karen from JMU 1969, the Smiths. Reed trying to make his parents happy there. Great to see you all back again. I've missed watching the games here in Plymouth, England. Want to see a goal from Josh now? Well, Jeanette Grant, you saw two goals from Josh here this evening. So, you know, she's smiling very big right now. <laughs> and more from Paul Wyatt. What I read from Paul earlier was from a Twitter account. This is a much more, um, got a little bit more to it here. He's watching from the comfort of his bed. Approaching 1 a.m. here. I've never concerned for a minute Dukes needed this kind of game to get their passing game going again. Looks good, and I like the freshman class a lot. On another note, your terminology is improving, and Houston's input is great addition. Great. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate that. 
I uh, say we call him Bjarki, by the way. The rest is too confusing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll agree with that. <laughs> and he says, oh, yeah, and tell Dale, Dale Robbins Bailey, stop copying my haircut. <laughs> <laughs> As uh, Yeah, he is sitting down on the sidelines with the coaching staff, so we may have to pass that along to him. Paul will just have to take that as a compliment. That's right. We have to be more like Paul. That's right. So we did get to our email bag. Thank you for uh, writing in this evening. Paul is correct that the Jamie Dukes have had a great passing game the entire game so far. Really spreading the field very what nice. VMI not putting too much pressure on them defensively. And that, that goes back to the time we're talking about the nice balls they've played in. They can just play them out in front, tap it ahead, and they can really tee it up. And they've sent some really good balls in. And VMI just allowing them to do so all night. And then also been a very aggressive off the dribble, resulting in a few of the goals as well. Monroe up the right side. Jordan over there. Nice little heel pass. Borgheim comes to the release side. Durbin. Jamal Umar. The Dukes just continue to put the white jerseys up front. Inside the box. Reed just does heel that ball wide. Got quite a bit of spin on it. Missed a grand opportunity there. Did Boyd. Looked like it may have went off a shin guard or something of a key dead as well to affect the rotation of it. Under 11 minutes remaining. Umar, though, working the wing well, taking it all the way down to the, to the corner before he plays it in. He's been giving nice passes as well. Wide to the left. Again, a reminder, the next production we'll have of men's soccer will be September the 22nd, a week from this Sunday. When we play... Uh, under the sunshine, we hope, that day against the Stetson Hatters out of Deland, Florida. Stetson, not a real large school. It's a private college. And Kaplan's goal kick just straight out of bounds. Trying to find a key depth running the sideline. A lot of space there. Just passed just a little bit behind the mid. Couldn't <laughs> tell who that was. I'm not here. Jimmy Simpson has now written in. Uh, of course, Daniel out there. We had both Simpson brothers here for a while, and he said, "Tell Paul to quit hogging all the airtime <laughs> 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 and go Dukes." Now, we talked a lot about Paul and Jimmy Simpson during their careers, so they got a lot of air time as well. This is one of the great things about uh, the Internet now and having the likes of Matazone HD Sportsnet and the Alumni Association is that uh, it allows for not only parents and family and friends, but then the alums to be able to uh, watch their alma maters play. It's something they take pride in. I know Paul wouldn't miss a game for anything and I'm sure all these Dukes when they leave want to keep up with it I know it's one thing that I like when I go back home able to catch up with the guys and see my younger brother play and can keep the Bassett soccer tradition and wherever else I was talking to a gentleman at a uh, dinner the other night and uh, I was actually giving a presentation on Matazone to a local uh, group and the guy was kind of in the back and he kept nodding his head as every time I'd say he'd nod his head nod his head so finally came up and says man I really like Madison he says I I um, I live here but I go to South Dakota for a month during the fall so I'm able to watch all the sports and keep up with everything there in South Dakota he has a cabin out there and he does a lot of hunting and fishing you know during the fall of the year right so he um came up and was very thankful for it and I think he spends much of uh, late September early October 
out there near Brookings, South Dakota, which actually uh, the big JMU view, JM View video board is was built out there in Brookings, South Dakota as part of uh, Dactronics. In fact, our, I call her the, I don't know if wizard's the right word, but uh, Lady Oz, uh, the, the woman behind JM View, which is uh, Katie Eisfeld Wyndham. She is, uh, went to South Dakota, went to school there, and that's how she got connected with Dactronics. And then Dactronics, they just kind of send her here and tell her, all right, this is your duty. That's Keep right. Up with the, the big old JM view. Among other things, but, yep, she does a lot of that. And she, I wouldn't be surprised she's sitting up at uh, Bridgeforth right now because we've got a home game on Saturday, and uh, she's probably done for tonight. But it, it takes a lot to get that programmed all lined up. we still got a little bit of production yet to do the next uh, 48 hours before we can settle in for Saturday's game. In fact, if you're coming to the game on Saturday, you'll see the Cameron Stark and the Megan Cox field goal kicking exhibition on JM View. Gorkheim takes a boot. Gorkheim just teed that one up. I believe he heard us mention field goal, and that's what he was going for there. Straight over the crossbar and past the net and just about to the, the field part of the track. Yeah, last restraining Slays. wall on that far side. Six minutes to go. As the Dukes with a 6-1 to one lead. 4-1 to one at one juncture. We were tied at 1. 14 minutes in. But since that time, it's been well, pretty much all JMU. Just as the series has been throughout the years. We'll get a chance. Tanisha will talk with Dr. Martin and get his thoughts of tonight's contest. As Kaplan... Pulls it down. Nicely done. Great textbook tackle, really. Just waited. Showed some patience there, did he not? A lot of patience. Kept his eye on the ball, waited for number seven. That's Taylor Raffley to, to make his move. And then when he made his move, just kind of stepped in. Outside of the foot, front foot, so he had the back foot. If the ball got by him to, to poke it away again. Just textbook tackle. Adel Steinson, who scored the first goal of the night off the header. Or Bjarki. We'll just get, leave it at that. A very pretty ball. Diagonal switched fields and, and was going for a while doing so. Boyd Reed just couldn't get to it a little too much on the ball. Excuse me, that was Umar. Thought I saw nine for a second. First set piece Jamie's had on their side of the field all night. We'll see what they can handle with it. Besides the corner ki corner kicks. Robert goes to the far corner of the box. Adel Steinson sends it across and cleared out there. We'll get a corner out of it for JMU. That's where the height advantage pays off for BRK Adel Steinson. I'm getting better with it. That's right. You've got to let it roll off there. The interview. Whether it's right or not, uh, we don't, you know. <laughs> I told him, I was like, I don't know, I can't really pronounce your, your last name too much, so I just call you Bjarki on the Madison. He goes, oh, that's fine, that's fine. We have a, uh, Lena Wimmert is the goalkeeper for the field hockey Dukes, and she's from Germany. And I, I think it's Bagus Klappe, Germany. <laughs> but I can't get it right to, to suit her to save my soul. You can go down there and ask Daniel Robert. Yeah, he, might, he would he be. Might, yeah, he might could help you out. He would help. He's from now, I, may, I may have to. I may ask him to get his pronunciation because the first time that I asked her, because I asked her to record, I had a recorder there, so I repeated it, and she, 
And I thought I repeated it the same way. She goes, no. And then she repeated it the same way I thought I did. <laughs> Maybe you don't have that <laughs> there, German there, accent. There must be something. Yes, yeah, like Bergesklappe. So, you know, of course, we have a lot of Mennonites in this area, so I th or Pennsylvania Dutch, of course. It kind of sounded like that when I was trying to uh, trying to say it. Just get Robert to say it, and, and you can Maybe I should do record that. it, and then yeah. every time you go to say it, just <laughs> plug that real quick. Just have it said. You know, may that. that's, maybe that's what I should do. I should just get him to record her introduction over at field hockey and just let that be hers. That would really fool her. Well, who's that? Well, they got it right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that ball looked like it stayed in. It should be a, a goal kick. The LR picked up his flag for a second, but the spin kept it in play. And then he said, well, never mind now. It's a goal kick. Comes down. That's ahead it goes. Bjorgheim. Kaplan will come out. Boyd is a uh, Shielding the ball away. And he'll take the short pass from jo uh, from Jordan. Gets the angle. Let's see. What are they going to call on this? It's a corner. Good call by the AR. Good defensive play, though, as well. Couldn't get the number on that key bet that went sliding in. Good job, though. Got some volleyball dukes in attendance here tonight. We, I knew we'd find some of the st student athletes here. Janie Goodman, who is a back-to-back CA -back Rookie of the Week. It's cool when you watch the ball cross the net from up here. It looks like a wave because everybody just kind of jumps up when the ball crosses over their head. 60 seconds to go. We'll see another one of the waves here. As short corner will come in. Again, intramural. Wow, seven to one was the final of there. It was a big blast in the second half. We're one goal away from making yeah, it we here. We are pretty close there for Simpson. Stick around in the post game. We'll uh, wrap up our statistics, take a look at some of the highlights, and also uh, chat once again with Dr. Tom Martin. And his perspective on tonight's. Six to one win. Sure, he'll be pleased with the performance. This ball sails just a bit out of bounds. Probably a little upset with the shaky start, but they settled in, and when they settled in and took shape, they really. Well, took you know, charge. and this is one of those games too, where um, when you do that, it's sort of like you know JMU football in the opener against Central Connecticut State. You can make some mistakes, but you can certainly over overcome those mistakes, and you can learn from this experience the next time uh, that you're playing a game against uh, against any opponent for that matter. So the final here is uh, six to one, the Dukes over the Cadets of VMI. That uh, ups the Dukes record to three and one. Cadets uh, now 0-3 and one. As JMU with the four to one lead at halftime and then pulling away for the six to one final here in the second half. We're gonna take a short break. When we come back, we'll take a look at our final statistics. Recap our highlights, and we'll see if we can uh, catch up with Dr. Tom Martin. As you've been watching JMU Men's Soccer on Matazone HD Live, presented to you by the JMU Alumni Association. Visit the James Madison University Bookstore, your source for all things JMU. Get your official Duke gear. Open after every football game. The JMU Bookstore. Support the team.
The Residence Inn by Marriott provides guests with plenty of room. Room to recharge. Room to prepare. Room to relax. Stay one night or as long as you like. The Residence Inn by Marriott provides each guest with amenities tailored to their individual needs. Spacious suites with all the comforts of home. Because it's not just a room, it's a residence. Well, welcome back to University Park on the campus of James Madison University. Kurt Dudley, Houston Stutz, and Tanisha Watkins with you here this evening. Dukes victorious, 6-1. to one. It uh, took the Dukes just uh, 12 minutes and 29 seconds into the game, so minute number 13 when they got their first goal. It came on a set piece as, actually, I think it was the second corner of the match. The Dukes had one as they faced the goal to the left, and they tried the second to the right. Adam Bastidas led it. And it was headed in by Bjarke Adel Steinson, so the Dukes had the one to nothing lead. However, it was under 60 seconds. In fact, it was, what, uh, 56 seconds later that uh, Wes Sope scored a goal, assisted by Kyle Forche, goal number one of the season for Sope, and it was 1-1, that in the uh, 14th minute. In the 31st minute, Dukes uh, saw Marcus Brorkheim set up a goal for Carell Monroe, his first goal of the season. And that made it 2-1. And then Mike Whitaker blast one right over the ducking head of Adam Bastidas. That made it 3-1, 32-43 to go, or into the match, I should say. So minute uh, number 33. And then minute number 34, Jonathan Barden with the goal. That made it 4-1. Uh, to one. The second half, Josh Grant, an assist by Bastidas. Call number three for the season, number 11 for his career. And then Grant again, assisted by Tom Fui on a cross here. Watch the header. Fui backs it up a bit. And Grant gets the second goal for his viewing fanship. So congratulations uh, to Grant on the two goals here tonight. And that would be all the scoring. JMU with 25 shots to three for VMI. On goal, the Dukes had 14. VMI put up a couple. Uh, saves, VMI eight between the two keepers. One for JMU's Kyle Morton. 17 fouls against the Dukes, seven for VMI. One corner for the Kedets, nine for the Dukes. Dukes were whistled for, nine, or for seven offsides. VMI stayed onside for much of the evening. They were uh, not offside at all. Take a look and break it down just a little bit further here as we're still waiting for uh, Dr. Tom Martin to come across the field to talk to uh, Tanisha. And our other statistics, breaking those down just a bit, those 25 shots. Quite a few Dukes did take them here tonight. Robert with four, same for Jonathan Barden. Two for Hill. Grant with two, and both of those scored. So what does that make him now? Six for seven, I think, on, was it six, five for six or six for seven? But he's uh, been on point all season. Uh, Mike Whitaker with a couple of shots, and he scored a goal. Adam Bastidas with uh, two shots. One was on goal. Tom Fui took a couple of shots. Jordan one shot. It was on goal. Adel Steinson with a shot. It was on goal. It found the goal. And Marcus Bjornkheim with two shots. And uh, then, of course, the other by Carell Monroe. For the uh, VMI Cadets, Morgan with a shot, Forche with a shot, Saupe with a shot. That's all three for VMI. Kaplan with four saves, allowed two goals. Kitchen, three saves and four goals. Both played 45 minutes tonight. And uh, the Dukes, actually, Kyle Morton was in for 78-24. And then uh, the Dukes made the late substitution. And uh, that substitute, Christian Faust, he, uh, redshirt freshman from Mandalay, Ohio, he uh, did not have any saves or uh, any uh, goals against here this evening. What was the final shots for Josh Grant? Grant uh, was two for two. 
So he was two for two. That makes him eight for seven now. Okay. He entered the night 83% with shots on goal. So really big night for Grant, and that will continue to go up again. That's his fourth goal of the year. So Grant, again, continuing to show off. Efficiency. Man That's of efficiency. Of That's right. No matter what you're doing, whether it's soccer or in your career, you want to be efficient in that. That's going to keep your bosses or coaches happy, as I'm sure Coach Martin is happy with Josh Grant and the way he played, as well as the JMU Nation. Played great, as well as the rest of the Dukes. And Tom Martin still addressing his uh, team, so we're still uh, waiting for him to come on across the field. Uh, just to give you the lineup of uh, what we've got on tap for you, we're coming up this weekend, uh, it's football on Saturday night. The Dukes against the Red Flash of St. Francis. Uh, Houston Stutz and I will be there once again. Pre-game coverage begins at uh, 5.35. Kickoff is at 6 o'clock, Community Day at uh, Bridgeport Stadium. Actually, it's going to be the same day. It's going to be the 8th annual uh, Day with the Dukes Day as the Special Olympians come in, about 60 Special Olympians will be there to uh, enjoy some fun with the football Dukes and uh, basketball Dukes. Cheerleaders are also going to be actively involved with them uh, early in the day, around noon. And um, then they're going to stick around for the game at 6 o'clock at night. Uh, the upcoming Matazone uh, men's soccer productions will have the audio for you of the Dukes against Stetson on September the 22nd. Circle your calendar for October the 2nd against Loyola. Uh, October the 6th against the Northeastern Huskies and October the 9th against the Delaware Blue Hens. And uh, all those games on Matazone free of charge here on HD Sportsnet. Well, I think what we're going to end up doing is instead of talking to Dr. Martin, it appears that uh, Josh Grant will be joining us as uh, Dr. Martin is going to uh, relinquish his time his field time, his time on the floor to Josh, which uh, I'm great with that. I'm Grant with that. That's fine. <laughs> glad glad we're able to do that. So Josh just making his way. He and Carell uh, making their way across the field now. And uh, we'll catch up with them in just a moment. Yeah, we try to keep it uh, productions kind of nice and tight like TV, but sometimes the nice thing about... Video streaming, we can kind of relax and just get to it when we can. Yeah, we don't have to end only the hour. Yeah, that's right. That Although short. It, well, do we need a station identification? It is 9 <laughs> o'clock. Pause 10 seconds for a station identification. That's right. You're on the Matazone HD Sportsnet, presented to you by the JMU Alumni Association. Well, they're all, all about ready down there. As Tanisha has, uh, we'll give Tanisha an assist tonight as well as uh, she's been able to corral Josh Grant. And let's see when they're about ready to go. And let's send it down now to Tanisha and Josh. Tanisha? I'm joined here by JMU men's soccer player Tom Grant. First, I want to say congratulations on the win tonight. And what worked well in this game to ultimately help y'all win? Uh, yeah, thanks for that, Daniel. Um, well, we, we, knew, we knew that we could outwork them and outplay them. I mean... By no stretch of imagination, they're a bad team, but we just we were confident going to it. We had a really good week of training, and we just know that if we get the ball down and start passing really quickly, then we're going to do well, and it's going to be hard for any team to get a result against us. And how are you going to use tonight's victory to help you all prepare for the next game? Yeah, um, next game is Georgetown Sunday. They're one of the best teams in the country. That just means we look forward to it already. We're already thinking about it. We always raise our game for the big teams, uh, but putting six goals past a team here tonight is only going to make us all confident, and we're going to take that confidence into the next game. All right, well, thank you very much. Back to Curtin Houston. All right, thank you, Josh Grant. Thank you, Tanisha Watkins. We do appreciate it, and uh, good night for the Dukes to uh, work on various aspects of their game. I think uh, Paul Wyatt, when he wrote in, was kind of talking about uh, passing and getting some continuity and, and getting a little more chemistry uh, with the teammates, particularly with a lot of the, the newcomers uh, on this squad. Oh, they look great passing the ball, and I uh, touched on it earlier. Just VMI didn't put as, as much pressure as I'm sure they would have liked to put on the Dukes because the Dukes were beating them over the top, but they're doing so that they were laid back. They had enough space, and like I said earlier, they just seemed so much more relaxed tonight. They were able to just kind of get their foot underneath it, put it where they wanted to, and the ball was just flying their way tonight. No breeze at all, so 
it dropped in where they needed it to, and they looked great doing so. They played the ball well on the ground tonight. A lot of uh, good touches, especially after that shaky start when they couldn't seem to find their shape. But once they did, defense settled in. Midfield definitely settled in. were able to control the ball for majority of the game. Forwards, obviously they were where they needed to be. Put the ball in the back of the net with the 6-1 victory. And, and even dribbling-wise, they started attacking off the dribble very aggressive. Um, went to the goal when they needed to. Got the one on ones uh, Every aspect of the game improved tonight, as you saw, and the future is certainly looking brighter and brighter for the Soccer Dukes. As the Dukes do improve, they picked up their third victory of the year, now 3-1. and one. VMI now 0-3-1, two programs 60 miles apart. Their first meeting in nine years. They're, uh, I guess, uh, unofficially their 23rd overall meeting. The Dukes continue to dominate this series now with 21 wins in the 23 outings. Two losses. Those were the first two matches that they played against one another in 68 and 69. And now over the last 21 encounters, the Dukes have outscored the Kedets 84 to 1. Uh, to 8, that is. 84 to 8. So uh, one or eight, uh, that's still a considerable margin there. And I'm not sure if they'll be back on the schedule next year, but uh, they were on this year, and the Dukes do come up with the victory. I want to thank a number of folks. First of all, John Stark, the uh, Sports Information Director for Soccer at uh, VMI. Here at James Madison, Matt Jackson. Also thanks to JMU Assistant Athletics Director for Athletic Communication, John Martin. Our producer tonight, John Salem. Director was Jake Tomko. Also want to thank the rest of the staff from Telemedia Productions who were uh, operating all of the uh, replay and all of our camera work here tonight. Tonight's match was presented to you by the JMU Alumni Association, Comcast Sportsnet, the JMU Graduate School, Intellos Wireless, the JMU Bookstore, Residence Inn, and Fox Hill Townhomes. For Houston Studs and Tanisha Watkins, I'm Kurt Dudley. And once again, our final score, it was JMU 6, VMI 1. Good evening from University Park. This has been a Matazone HD Sportsnet production presented to you by the JMU Alumni Association.